Hello and welcome to this episode of Figaroing Things Out. Ta-da! Do you like that name? It's horrible, I know. Today, you may notice that there's a weird-looking thing on the hood, and there's a weird-looking thing in the passenger seat. And the door looks kind of wrong. That's because what we are doing is replacing that speaker. Ever wonder what the inside of a Figaro door looks like? This! And apparently, wherever this car lived in Japan was humid as forks because the amount of mold on the inside of the vapor barrier is a little gross as well as on the door card itself just look in there it's not super bad up top but down here ugh, it's really bad and the bottom side is just gross delicious so this this also has apparently given up it looks like it should have been glued like that i have some spray adhesive and i will see if it will if it will stick i'm sure it will be fine because it came off the car like this but the other kind of a sad thing is this has gotten chewed up that's what rattled i don't know Anyway, that has gotten chewed up almost certainly just from the seat belt, but I could, I guess down the road this could be reupholstered. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I have an assortment of bits on the dashboard, and rather amusingly to me, the uh, speaker grills are deceptive. I thought, you know, with the shape of the grill, that it would be like a... Um, four inch round driver and a tweeter next to it but it is actually just a four by six coaxial driver and the original one is very blown as you can see um the surround is completely gone and it's dead uh, i tested it with an with the ohm meter and it read open so this was dead and i also tested to see if i could get any ac on that and something was there, so hopefully the amplifier is fine. I am pretty certain this is the original speaker because I believe Clarion is who made the stereo for the Figaro. Pretty certain that it was made by Clarion. So this is probably an original speaker. I have some cheap replacements from everybody's favorite uh, retail monopoly, online retail monopoly. And they fit fine, but of course the screw holes do not line up quite right. It seems I can probably get... It's really weird, because I could get probably three of them to line up well, but not all four. Because like right here, that would catch... That might catch... I don't know, I'm going to have to modify this a little bit. But... The other odd thing is the vapor barrier behind the speaker. It it just doesn't have one, I guess. I mean, there's this, but that I don't think ever glued in there. I guess this just provides enough shielding from water from getting in. Because if you didn't know this about car doors, water just goes right through them. So like you can see the window, the window's rolled down. Here's the glass. Water will just go right through the door when it rains and should come out the bottom. So this piece of plastic is really the only thing that keeps the inside of the door from getting wet. So that's a little weird. Why is that? What was there? Oh, it might be a screw. I don't know. Anyway, um, so normally the water just goes right through the door and it should come out. Um, there's going to be some seep holes there, and then there's usually rust develops there, so I'm kind of happy that so far there's no rust there. There is a little bit of rust forming right here. Nothing bad. But anyway, yeah, so it's just interesting that the vapor barrier doesn't really extend behind the speaker, but I guess that, that this is just enough of a roof for it. Because it doesn't look like this was ever water damaged. 
And definitely the door card has come off before because it was missing some screws in general. But anyway, I am here to replace, to get that speaker in there somehow, test it, hope that it works, and then put the door card back on here before I take off the other one because I want to make sure that I remember how to put it back together and I still have that one as a reference. It was kind of a pain in the butt. You had to get, had to take the window switch module out of there and the, this little thing which is apparently plastic. I'm not, I don't know why I'm surprised about that. And the door lock and other things. So it was a, not a walk in the park. Other thing is I have foam, like, where's that other piece? These pieces of foam just fell out. Hopefully, I've not been paying attention to the camera work, I'm sorry there, but these pieces of foam just fell out when I took off the door card. Um, they were they look to have been glued onto the face of the speaker, and I have some foam that I will do the same thing there. I'm guessing all that it does is keep it from rattling against the door card. And then, last thing I wanted to share before we, I replace the speaker, um, I have apparently, well, I haven't apparently discovered, I discovered that apparently in a Figaro, you do not need to have the key in the ignition at all for the turn signals to work. They will work whenever. So you can just, oh. Fun fact for you there. That's what time it is, by the way. That's a clock and it's accurate. It is about eight o'clock at night. What a weird video this is. I'm really having kind of a scatterbrained evening. I know these came with butt connectors and I don't know where I put them, but that's fine because I figured I'd better solder them anyway. Uh, so this is partly for my documentarian knowledge. That didn't technically need to go on there, but the, I have the colored wire. The blue wire is going to the marked wire on the harness for the new speakers. Okay? Don't forget that. The colored wire is going to the marked wire. Some of you might have thought, why didn't you do black and black? Well, see, I did special with black because the other one might be a different color. It doesn't really matter anyway, even if I wire them out of phase. Could you really notice in a car from 91 with these tiny little speakers? I don't know, but anyway, time to shrink the heat tubing or heat the shrink tubing. And then I will put this uh, bigger one over both of them so it'll look nice and professional and also just reduce the chances of there being a problem. Look at that, all nice and not terribly ugly. And it was nice, uh, I was able to get the original black sheathing underneath there. So look at that, what a lovely repair job. And now I shall plug in the new speaker and just set it in here and I wanna see if it works. All right, this is only a test because that's only held in by two screws, but believe it or not, the Figaro CD player actually works, which I'm really surprised about. This car is kind of early to have a CD player and the fact that it's still working is great. So let's see. You're gonna love what I'm playing. Yes! Okay, okay. Now that sounded like garbage. Hopefully that was just it rattling. I'm gonna play around with that. But the other thing, the other thing that I'm really hoping this fixed is the AM radio appears to be completely dead in the car. And I've been wondering if it only plays the AM radio through this speaker because the FM radio band in Japan is completely different. It's 76 to 90. So this car can pick up like two stations on the very high end. But the AM band is pretty much the same. It's uh, 5 to 1400, so it should be able to pick up AM, but I can't get it to play anything. AM is completely dead. So let's see. Why is it knocking like that? That's weird. Anyway. Uh, still nothing at all. The balance all the way to the right. Uh, 
And it's so annoying because it seems like it's getting stations. It keeps... That's motorized. That's not... That's weird. It's behaving differently in AM than FM. But that little needle's motorized. This isn't actually doing anything. But it seems like it's getting something. But there's nothing at all. Like, not even static. I have the volume all the way up. And there's no static. So that's a bummer. I don't know why the AM radio doesn't work. Not that it really matters anyway. A CD player and tape deck both work, although the tape deck's heads are really, 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 really dirty. I need to clean that. And the other thing I will eventually need to do is many of these lights are burnt out. That's the track display for the CD player. I don't know if it's supposed to have a light, but it doesn't have one. And you can see those buttons are dead down here. Those are dead. Hang on, I'll turn off the lights. So that's what the radio currently looks up, looks, oh good goodness, trying to find something. It's not that hard. There we go. That's what the radio currently looks like at night, missing a lot of bulbs. So I'd like to replace those if I can figure that out. And also the instrument cluster is missing some bulbs. It is, the tachometer is missing at least two. And I have a feeling the speedometer is missing some too, because it's really, really dark. A lot of people replace uh, put LED replacements in these. I do not want to do that because I think it just looks kind of gross and inauthentic. So I'm going to keep this with, got to find out whatever bulbs they use and try to tackle that at some point. The speedometer is going to be a pain because getting the speedometer cable released is kind of a problem. Anyway, okay, well the reason why that speaker sounded like total crap is because there was something very wrong with it. I am so annoyed because now I'm at a stopping point and I can't do the other one. I need to get... I need to get a return or order replacements. You know, I'm such a sucker because the only reason I picked these was because of the yellow thing. I thought that looked neat. Everyone's fallible. Everyone will do stupid things like that. Why did I order these stupid speakers? I don't know. But the good news is it was just dead. The amplifier's okay. AM radio still doesn't work. But... Since the tape player and the CD player both work, don't particularly care. Because I can use that Bluetooth adapter. And this is this is why I got it, is for this car. Uh, oh, the other thing is, I have heard, but I've, I want to confirm at some point, that this car doesn't actually have electronic skip protection because the CD player is that old. Again, it's a 91. It's surprising that it has a CD player. That's really early for car CD players, especially to be integrated so nicely as this one. But anyway, I don't know if it has skip protection, and I think it might be just completely useless on the road. But maybe not. Maybe it works fine. But anyway, um, I'm annoyed, I'm annoyed, but I will order some new speakers and hopefully get this done in the next couple of days. And then I can button the door up and replace the other one, because I'm sure the other one is completely shot too, if this one, none, I'm forgetting it's right here, none of the surround is there at all. It's all gone. So I'm sure the one in there is not in good shape. Anyway, I'm sorry this video was such a <laughs> disappointment.